I got a lot to do today, and I'm trying to stay ahead of the rain. It rained all week, and it's supposed to rain again tonight. And I've got uh, some wood I gotta cut, I've got a project I wanna finish, so I'm trying to get everything done as quick as I can today. When you're living off grid, you're continually looking for ways to simplify life using what's available. Today I've got a project I'm going to share with you that I'm pretty excited about. So we're gonna be making an off-grid wood-fired water heater. And this is pretty important to me, because right now, this is what a shower looks like. The idea is to be able to heat five gallons of water at a time using a standard five gallon bucket. If that doesn't work, we'll have to use the modified bucket. Here, the cold water will exit the bottom of the bucket It'll go through the heating coils and come back into the top of the bucket. We'll get a constant circulation going. The problem with using the modified bucket is we'd have to disconnect the hoses from both the bottom and the top in order to use the hot water. The potential problem with the standard bucket is we're going to have to pump the water over the top of the bucket and back out of the top of the bucket. And I'm not sure my thermal siphon will build up enough pressure to be able to do that. All right, I'm going to go find some wood to cut. Well, you can see I got a lot of options here for wood. Typically, I cut logs ranging from 12 to 18 inches in length. However, this time I need them to fit into a small wood stove. So I'll be cutting them to about eight inches long. I like cutting logs right in the middle of the woods. That way there's no mess to clean up. My hatchet is marked Boy Scouts of America. My father gave me this hatchet when I was going on a Boy Scout outing. I was a little disappointed at the time because it was an old hand-me-down from when my father was in the Boy Scouts. Today it's more than 70 years old and it's one of my most cherished possessions. So I got a bit of a dilemma. All the food I brought needs to be heated on the wood stove. But I don't want to use the wood stove today because it needs to be cold tomorrow morning when we insert the new water heater. So now we're going to try this, chicken teriyaki. This has a shelf life of 2053, so I hope it's good. So we're going to be using one of my little homemade fuel canisters. And we'll place that inside the little camp stove. Now this time we're using denatured alcohol, so you can't really see the flame when you use this. So you gotta be really careful with it. And yes, that's burning right now, even though you can't see any flame. Well, it's boiling.
Well, it's been five minutes. Let's give it a try. Okay, let's give it the taste test. That's actually quite good. I spent much of the rest of the day collecting branches and leftover firewood for a future campfire. I'm glad I got it done because like expected, it rained all night. This is how the water heater is supposed to operate without electricity. Through a natural siphon, water enters the heating coil at the bottom. As it is superheated in the coil, the water rises, exits through the top and returns to the bucket, creating a continuous loop until it reaches the desired temperature. My project started at the Home Depot. This was supposed to be a prototype, but when I saw the price of copper tubing, this quickly became a working model. I have a piece of stovepipe, and the plan is to tightly wrap the copper tubing around it. However, since the stovepipe is less than two and a half inches in diameter, wrapping it tightly presents a challenge. You can see there's a lot of space between the tubing and the stovepipe, which means lost heat. But if we wrap it any tighter, the copper tubing will kink, and then we have to cut that part off. The heater hose can't handle the same high temperature as the copper coil. To create more space between the heater hose, wood stove, and coil, I decided to solder two extension tubes to the coil. This should ensure a safe distance when connecting the hose. Soldering is quite fascinating. When you apply the flux with the small brush, it effectively draws the melted solder into the joint, welding the pipes together and ensuring it becomes watertight. I was trying to come up with a solution to recover some of the lost heat. I think the answer lies in encasing the tubing with a metal sleeve. This setup would essentially form a miniature oven where the water could be superheated as it pumps past the stovepipe. Okay, so we're going to install the water heater on this piece of pipe right here. We're going to remove this piece of pipe and we're going to replace it with our, our coil that's going to slip right inside here. After leaving the window open, I placed a fireproof concrete board in the window frame. The stovepipe passes through the board with a fireproof sleeve inserted to seal the hole. Okay, that was easy enough. Now I'm going to go back outside to reconnect the, uh, the rest of the chimney. Now we want the bucket. The bucket of water needs to be at least as high as the, uh, the coil. 
And I think we can have it anywhere we'd like above the coil. We just got to make sure it's at least as high as the coil. So I think that'd work fine right there. Now we're going to hook, hook up the heater hose. This is good for about uh, 300 degrees, so this should be fine. We've got to make sure that the cold end, which is on the bottom, goes all the way to the bottom of the bucket. And we want the hot end to go to the top of the button, bucket so we can get the rotation of the water through. We also want to ensure that the top of the hose remains submerged below the water level to capture any hot steam. Okay, I'm going to go outside now and get some water. I'm just going to use rain water for this test. I don't think it's important that it's potable water or not. My water collection system may be primitive, but it's effective. I leave buckets for the rain with small holes drilled in the lid. The lids help keep the water relatively clean and slow down evaporation. Additionally, I place micro netting on top to keep out mosquitoes and debris. I usually backpack in my drinking water. So it looks like the water temperature is about 44 degrees. Okay, I guess now we just wait. So you might be asking yourself, why do we have this contraption set up when all we'd have to do is heat the water right on the stove? Well, the ideal situation is while the water is heating, we can actually be cooking dinner or anything else using the stove for that in addition to getting the heat. Also, we're heating five gallons at a time, as opposed to probably just a couple of gallons is all you would have on the wood stove at a time. So where the water is entering the coil, it is very cold. The top one is getting to the point it's almost getting too hot to touch. Well, it seems to be working. I can hear the water cycling through. I think while I'm waiting, I might as well make a late breakfast or an early lunch.
Well, the water is heating fine. The bucket's getting warm. What a great time for lunch. Well, it seems to be working better than expected. With all the rain on the roof, you can't really hear the water chugging through it, but you can, if you stand right here, you can hear the water chugging through the pipes. The bucket now is warm to the touch. So the heater hose at the bottom is getting quite warm. The copper is probably too warm to grab onto now. And at the top, the heater hose is quite hot. So a comfortable shower is between 100 and 105 degrees, and you can see we're coming in about 102. The ideal situation is to remove one heated bucket of water and then replace it with a cold one, ensuring a continuous hot water supply. This is a rechargeable shower sprayer. I've used it in the past with just a bucket that was heated in the sun, which is really quite chilly. But even standing in the pouring rain, I cannot tell you how good this hot water feels. I would have no problem taking a shower in this. I've never had a problem washing dishes in cold water but it sure feels nice to wash them in hot water. Thank you for watching my video. I'm quite impressed with the hot water. We could take a scoop out of the bucket just to do dishes, or we could take the entire bucket outside for a nice hot shower. I think it'll make my stays here a lot more enjoyable.